Okay. All right. Welcome everyone. My name is Angela. I work for the Town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded and will soon be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. At this time, I would like to represent or recognize the chair of the Cultural Council, Terry Holt. Terry, I will make you the host and I wish everyone a good meeting. Thank, Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Hello, everybody. And we have a guest. Hello, Madeline. Welcome. Uh, Madeline Greenberg is here as well. She's welcome to chime in whatever she likes. I'm <laughs> going to read the, our little spiel here. Um, in light of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, Governor Baker issued an emergency order on March 12, 2020, allowing public bodies greater flexibility in utilizing technology in the conduct of meetings under the open meeting law. And here we are. Um, hopefully we're coming to the end of this. And so uh, we're looking forward to having a public meeting soon, which we'll talk about later. So um, you all have a agenda in front of you, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a special meeting. So uh, regular rules don't really apply. So we don't have to uh, approve the minutes until the next meeting. So we'll be doing that on the April 3rd meeting. And all business regarding uh, shows, exhibits, et cetera, um, we'll, we'll also be talking about that on April 3rd. So this is a going to be a brief meeting. Uh, I don't want to take all of your time since I'll also be seeing you all April 3rd. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to possibly share my screen if I can get this to work. I'm sure I can. This one, share. All right, you all see what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. All right, this is what Dara is gonna be doing. <laughs> Very exciting, water lines. She just told us she's doing something in Somerville, Somerville, Museum, very exciting. Congratulations, Dara. Thanks. Okay. Um, uh, is there anybody who would like to take the meet the minutes today? Jim cannot make it today. I have a form you can use that should be just a kind of a fill in the blank, pretty easy job if anybody is up for it. Uh, I can do it. Um, so is, is I don't, okay, I was Lori? just looking an agenda but i couldn't find it i'm gonna send this i'm gonna put this in the chat okay uh if i can figure out how to do that just one minute chat ah oh, there it is okay i'm putting this in the chat um you can open that and that is just a, a link to a template that should work did you get that there no. should be just a kind of a fill in should be pretty simple i hope um oh wait sorry okay i lost you all there you went just a minute so um first things first we're going to uh have a roll call because that is supposedly what we're supposed to be doing at every meeting <laughs> so if you are here please raise your hand actually no please speak out loud that you're here by saying I or hey, here, whatever you want to say. Uh, Robert Brayden. Here. Great. Michelle Mikey Cutting. Here. Lori Friedman. Here. Harry Holt, I am here. Dara Weir. Wire. Wire. I'm sorry, Dara. Okay. And James Jim is not here today. So, so I call this meeting to order. Um, the chair report is very simple. This meeting is a special meeting to consider this making a public proposal. Um, that we've been working on in collaboration with Gabrielle Gould, executive director. Can you, wait, can you slow down for one second? Because I can't get into this document. That okay, that's fine. I've got this all written down. So this should be, you don't have to type this all. I have this all in here. So this should be real simple for you. Okay. Um, you the link? I, I have the link. I just can't, I'm not, can't get into the Google. Let um, me make sure. Okay, it's anyone with a link should be, hold on one second. Let me make sure I've got this right. Okay, try that again. Okay. It should work now. Sorry. All right, let me try again. Oh, technology. Huh. Hmm. Well, well, no, so maybe, maybe I, I can I'm let you know that um, Angela told me she's going to be making the um, She's going to be promoting the 
call for new commissioners um, coming up soon is going to go out on uh, town bulletin board, bulletin, uh, the Gazette, and on Notify Me. And so she's going to send me a link, and I'm going to be sharing that on our Facebook page as well so we can get some folks in here. All right. All right. Laura, are you ready to go? I think let's see if I can type. Here you are. Yes. Now I can type in there. Anonymous Hyena is, is talking. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read this again. Uh, the meeting's a special meeting to consider the proposal for making it public. Um, with big thanks to Gabriel Gould, um, who has been helping us on request by the town manager. As such, other commission matters will be discussed at the next regular meeting commission, sorry, that the next regular monthly commission meeting scheduled for Monday, April 3rd is 6 p.m. Um, I have asked if Gabriel, Gabrielle could be at that meeting and she says yes. So she is going to be on the agenda for April 3rd. And so she can kind of go through with us what the next steps are to promote this, um, to make this, making it public, public and get this out into the world. Thanks for watching. My lovely wife just brought me tea. <laughs> so um, I look forward to her being here so she can walk us through what the next steps are. We're going to be having a big promotion and push and uh, we are not in charge of that. She will be in charge of that. Thank all the gods and thank you, Gabrielle. So um, I sent you earlier today the application. I don't know if you all got a chance to take a look at it, but I thought we'd just go through it together, okay? Yeah. And this is what we're gonna be kind of voting on today to just to prove that we're all on the same page going forward. I'm, a, I'm sorry, Jim couldn't be here, but we'll hear from him, I'm sure, on this. So this is what it looks like if you, um, from my side, from the, uh, this isn't the, the uh, if you're feeling this out, it's gonna look a little different, of course. So I do. I wanted to see this version so you can see all of it. So um, I'm gonna read along. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. The Amherst Public Art Commission and Amherst Business Improvement District and the New England Foundation for the Arts invite you to fill out this application for a ten thousand dollar grant for one public art commission as part of the Making It Public project to create a temporary or semi-permanent artwork that recognizes the experience and culture of the Black, Indigenous, and people of color in Amherst for installation in Amherst's Kendrick Park. If you're applying as part of a group, please list the primary contacts information below. At the bottom of the first section, please list additional artist names. Applications that do not include a primary contacts information will not be considered. If you need help with this application or have any questions, please contact Gabriel Gould with the Amherst Business Improvement District via email. Um, and we have her email and phone number. Um, okay, so uh, we'll walk through it real quick. If you'll notice the things that are uh, uh, mandatory, these things have to be filled out or else this form will not progress. So we have to have basic information. So um, working on, on this application with NEFA, we uh, learned quite a bit about how to put out a call for art uh, in a digital application. Um, and to make it equitable. And that was a really, it was a big lesson for me because I'm, uh, I work with applications, with these kinds of make uh, appeals before, like putting out calls for art. And uh, I feel like um, we haven't opened it enough for people of all um, abilities and et cetera. And I think this is, this is really a great, this is a great lesson for me. So I, I hope you all agree. <laughs> Um, for applications of more than one artist, we this person will be applying for this as a primary contact, and then they'll list the artist's names below, so we'll have everyone's names. Uh, then we state our mission. This grant is for the creation of a temporary or semi-permanent artwork that recognizes the experience and culture of the Black, Indigenous, and people of color in Amherst, for installation in Amherst, Kendrick Park. And then the first question, does your proposal seek to center the voices of Black, Indigenous, people of color in Amherst? And that's a pretty important question. Um, please check all that apply as the artist applying for this, to this grant, ethnicity. You'll notice this is not a mandatory question. So the form will progress uh, whether or not uh, you, uh, you fill this out. Uh, please check all that apply as the artist applying to this grant, race. And again, you'll see not a mandatory question. Uh, what is the artist's relationship to the town of Amherst? Um, and this is really because we are trying to choose a local artist if possible, a local, an Amherst artist, if we can. We'll be, uh, I think there's a little extra, an extra point if you are an Amherst artist. So in the, in the selection process. Uh, qualifications, please share a short bio of yourself up to two paragraphs, mandatory. Okay. Are, are we Question? supposed to 
Are we supposed to be commenting now or waiting? Uh, you can comment whenever you like, if there's anything that you have questions about, and I will okay. try to answer your question. I have a question. Okay. When Could it say how many words the bio would be instead of up to two paragraphs? Because paragraphs is vague and can be interpreted anyway. So people would question that maybe about what does that mean? I think- um, Why not put 500 words or whatever? I think Nefa asked us not to limit this um, because of some people may want to put, you know, 20 words. Some people may want to write an essay. And we didn't think this should be a thing that would limit you from the application process. This isn't part of the selection criteria. I mean, it's mandatory, but we're not going to be judging it by, by the bio. So did you hope for two paragraphs to mean any mean anything? We're trying to open it. I think the uh, thought was to open it up as much as possible so that it wouldn't limit anybody one way or the other. Um, and this is also something that other towns did as well, the up to two paragraphs. Okay. Um, because so, so it, I just am thinking of people who are trying to fill it out and think, what do they mean by a paragraph? A paragraph can be one sentence or it can be a whole book. So uh, yeah, and this won't this won't limit as anyway. long as they 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 upload some some kind of a short bio, this part of the application has been checkmarked, is, is checked. So that will just be incumbent on us as the readers to read it all. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, the longer the better, but that's not, that's just me. Yes, Robert. Okay. Um, I didn't notice uh, up at the top, but is there something that explains that the asterisk means required and no asterisk, no asterisk means optional for people is, who are usually in Not, it says um, it says in red um required with a star by it yeah it does say that to, okay that's yeah. A top. Yeah. yeah and so i was curious so um the question about living in amherst that's not required it has no star it's not um okay. we, what is the artist relationship to the town of amherst um we only were i think so according to the we had to come up with a whole um oh what is the word a rubric for how we score every application. And um, on that application, it was not a detraction if you were not from Amherst, but if you are from Amherst, we, you, have, you get an extra point. So um, it doesn't really figure into, uh, that extra point isn't a real big one. So we didn't want to make that a mandatory question. Okay. Also, these things are really hard to prove. It's hard for us to say, well, you know, prove it, like prove your race, prove your nationality, prove, you know, your relationship with the town of Amherst. Um, so, Again, NAFA was asking us because we had a, a lot more. Our our initial application was a lot more picky about our questions, and uh, NAFA really asked us to open these up, and um, so that it is more inclusive and inviting to more uh, more artists. So that's what we endeavored to do, and it was a, it was a struggle because I you know I'm a stickler. I like you know, <laughs> I I, um, I like forms. <laughs> so, okay, moving on here. Uh, please upload a resume or CV in PDF format. Also not required. NEFA asked us not to make that required. If you have an online artist portfolio or website, please share the URL here. Please upload samples of your artwork samples, three to five digital images of applicants related work that include title, year, and medium. Images can be uploaded in JPEG form to the online form or copied into a single PDF and included with printed application materials to be mailed. So this was something that um, NEFA worked with us for the language to make sure that we have, um, that this is incredibly inclusive. So for people who don't, uh, who can't send things in uh, digitally, um, we'll also, we're also gonna be making applications available at the public library so that people who don't have a computer can also apply. So this was something that was necessary as part of this application process. Um, question. question. Um, could the asterisk be at the front? of the this is unfortunately a google form and so uh i don't think that's a, a uh, something i can fix on the template i think that is a an automatic i think that is just where yeah, google because it's are almost put. invisible and so the emphasis of it makes it hard to notice it yeah so if they if they try to go, move on to the next question uh it won't let them or it won't let them finish it'll say please go back to number four and finish so okay. um 
there's definitely no way to progress unless you do those those exact okay. those particularly the asterisk ones. All right. Okay. Uh, please list contact information, names, email addresses for two references for similar work. Uh, okay. Question about, question about for similar work. Right. What does it mean? So it, it actually refers to the question before it. So that also uh, uh, so that so you're going to submit your artwork samples and then uh, if this is the artwork that you're you're uh, submitting to us to, to choose you know, from a selection process, you know what other things have you created that are that are that made that same in that same medium and same style so that we can see what you've done before and see if we're going to like your style in our in our park. So that's where that comes from. I thought that please list contact information was about other people who could be a reference for the it, it is yeah people who have seen the uh, the work or worked with the artist on on similar work is what that really means so it's it's kind of a uh validating <laughs> so you know not you're not just saying i can do this there's other people who say yes this person can do this i've worked with them would it be wrong to say for references for similar work to yours um or two references for similar work to yours yeah something that makes it because similar work is i don't know what that's referring to even though you explained it to me you did well it does don't you mean similar work you want references for similar work by the artist yeah not another artist obviously if you're filling out the application right. i mean it's your yeah, application it seems clear to me but okay I think I think it's understood there, Dara. But thank you. It's not to me. Okay, I will I will note that. That is. To yours. Okay. Uh, next one is. Sorry, could we just the uh, the question above where it says please upload samples of your artwork samples? Do we? We want samples of their samples, or we just want samples. It seems like we have an extra samples in there. <laughs> there is an extra samples there. Yep, definitely. <laughs> we don't need that many samples of a sample. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna actually. Can I edit this one? I think I'm gonna have to do this someplace else. Okay. Thanks for that. Well, what if you just took out for similar work? Please include two references. It's isn't it obvious? That'd be okay. Would that help, Dara, or does that this contact information for two? Yeah, references? I think that makes a lot more sense. I think for similar work is an ambiguous phrase, and you don't know what it's referring to. But reference is a reference. Does anybody else understand why we would have for similar work and have any thoughts about it? Just making sure that the work that they're uh, representing is the work that they're going to do in uh, this space. And that's why you would want references about that type of work. Why right. don't you put for, for, for references for your proposed, um, for the work that you're proposing? For your ability to complete the work you propose. Can't use ability. Okay. Okay. That's well, why you say similar work. I, I understand why you're saying it. It's verbiage. Yeah, it's yeah. it's inclusive verbiage. And, and it, NEFA was very clear and very specific about our wording. Right. Um, so they suggest for the work you are proposing might work. I'll talk to NEFA about that. Yeah, I, I see I see what you're all saying or, there. The or you work could, is a little big. You could say two references for similar projects instead of work. Maybe that would be. Dara, what do you think about that? That's better. I'm wondering if projects means that they all feel like they have to have something that's been like published or exhibited. I'm going to ask, um, I'll ask Neff about it to see what they say. Okay. Great. Yeah, I, I actually do think if you put projects, it might be I limited. wonder if you could just list two references because, um, you know, if you're expecting that they've done something like this in the past, then you're ruling out 
with people who, you know, this is their first time. Yeah, this may be on the rubric. I may need to take a look at the rubric and see how closely the, the word, the verbiage is to the rubric, because these are very, very specifically linked to the rubric that we're all going to, we're going to be considering when we're looking at the, at the works. Okay. Um, so I need to kind of make sure they're linked up. Um, I don't have the rubric open for me right now. I'm going to see if I can catch that. In Could you send that to us? The rubric? Yeah. Um, let me, I think I did before, but let me, let me see real quick if I have it available real quick. I had commissioners copy, is it? This might be it. Okay, this may be what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, details, goals, location, timeline, okay. Does sure. it come with little boxes that say project? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like what we did when we worked on this before. I believe this is the most the most recent one. Okay, so I have the old those one. project qualifications. I, I have the old one, the sample archery scoring rubric. Right. Is that, you have a new one now? Yes, oh yes, oh yeah. We had to change that. that amazingly yeah, <laughs> that one was not at all inclusive and we had to change it drastically right terry um, are we going to be reviewing this document together tonight this one or the or the other application this the actual yeah. call to artists that we're looking at right now this so this one this commissioner's copy right here is the proposal in writing that the application was based on so we can go over this as well if you feel like that'll be useful I think well, I, I mean, this, this is a, this is a document that's going out to the public, correct? Not not this one. This is the one that um, the one that's going out to the public is the application. So this is the one that's going to be uh, out in the public. So we're oh, going to be okay. So the, so the yeah. only so the only call to artists is this application, this right. Google form. The other document, also be, the yeah. other document is not going to go out. It's more of a scope document in order to get our funding um, and to make sure that our rubric aligns with what we're with our selection criteria. So okay. and that was a huge part of this NEFA effort was to make sure our selection criteria that we have on our application matches our judging rubric like directly so that we are. Um, uh, so that it's very uh, easy and equitable and inclusive and, and I see like, does that make sense. So this yeah. document we can take a look at and I can share it with you. Well, no, if 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 that's not going out to the public, that, then I don't think that's necessary. I guess my only my only comment on the rubric is and not to jump to the end, but it seems like the uh there are only 40 points attributable to project impact and 60 points. Like if you scroll down to the bottom of this. If you keep going to the bottom, so 60 points for proposed qualifications and 40 points for project impact. I guess I would think at a minimum, it should be 50 50 to me, it seems project impact is is a pretty significant. <laughs> uh, item that we would want to weigh fairly heavily in terms of the judging process or or the 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 jury rather should should weigh heavily so right. I just think that's worth talking about a bit before we make a final decision on that. Okay. So um, you want to kind of take a look at those the rubric and talk about that scoring because I think we can we can talk about changing the numbers to make those more equitable, like make them 50-50. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. That doesn't seem like a really big change. I'll make sure that's okay with our folks. Um, um Terry. Thanks. Yes. Is it the the application and the judging rubric will both be submitted to um, the New England Foundation for the Arts? Yes, they've got, we've been working on both for a while now. Um, this we worked on this first to get this cemented in, and once this was finally approved, I took this information and created the application, the online application, and um, that's and now we have been working on. Uh, finalizing the application for a few weeks now. And Gab Gabrielle. Okay, so the application and the judging, uh, this is for the minutes. The application and the judging rubric will both be submitted to um, New England Foundation for the Arts. Right. To um, 
in order in order to in order to secure our funding so that we get uh we'll get half uh at launch and half at a later date i'm not remembering exactly okay. so okay. that's what i've come okay. to so far thanks okay so basically we would be using this this rubric we would be um our, all of our jurors would have a copy of, of this rubric for every artist who's submitting uh, so we can score I'll talk to Nefa and uh, Gabrielle about if we can make this scoring more 50 50 um just and that's a, that seems like a math thing I'm going to see if that's an if that's if that's a problem I'll get back to you is that okay Robert sure. okay all right back to let's see contact information oh yeah I wanted to look in here to see if there's something in from about this um application okay does it include the artist's bio sample image of artwork okay um I'm not even sure that that question is is absolutely necessary at the, the references um but I think it's something we need to have in there honestly <laughs> for our own you know selection do you have something there no no thank you okay okay now we're moving on to the proposal please tell us about your proposal make sure to include information regarding the conceptual description of your project including artistic medium and the impact you think your project will have for raising BIPOC voices and experiences in Amherst uh, the word conceptual here was very important for NEFA for us to put in here <laughs> it's just just kind of remarking on that. Qualifications. The artist proposes a project concept that has a three-dimensional element, is able to be installed on a approximately four by four concrete foot pad concrete base, is able to withstand various weather conditions for a minimum of four months, is ADA compliant and suitable for installing in a public park, uh, not feature commercial or religious content, is fabricated of highly durable, low maintenance materials, suitable for climate conditions, resistant to UV damage, safe for public interaction. This project is in the public realm and may therefore be exposed to physical stresses as well as be subject to vandalism and be inclusive and welcoming and appropriate for all ages. Any questions about those? I'd like to I'd like to understand the same thing I brought up earlier about not featuring commercial or religious content. Okay. I don't know what that means and why why does any FA want that? Um Great question. Let's take a look here. I think that was um, there was some reason for that. This was in the original. I remember I, I brought it yeah. up. Did we take it out of the original? No, I'm, I'm not remembering. I asked for it to be because I don't. I think that that's censorship in a kind of way that could really deny some people subject matter and material. And I don't think that's a welcome thing for artists. But I also think the town of Amherst should not be putting up any kind of public art in our name that is uh, affiliated with any one religion. Because I think that that uh, reflects poorly on the town of Amherst. Uh, so this is not just an artist's uh, voice that we are saying here, this is an artist um raising BIPOC voices and this isn't but this isn't whatever is put up in our parks reflects on us as a town as a as a as a town as a public uh art commission so I think that is the reason why we couldn't have commercial interests up we can't have a big Pepsi sign we can't have a big um you know uh sign that says uh Muslims are great you know, like we can't have any um, anything yeah, that's no problem. You know what I'm saying? Like it because when you see, when you have a cross or you have some kind of symbol of um, religion, then you're uh, in a public park. I think that puts us all in jeopardy um, because it says this is our messaging, and that's not something we really want to do as a public art commission. Am I am I incorrect here, everybody? I think you're right. Um, the other question I have is about. Do we have to, because now we're zero um, uh, 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 building materials, do, do we have to go for that in this situation? Now that we are zero, zero building, explain what you mean, Mikey, I'm not sure. I'm not I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I have no clue, but I know in 
like building of the library and redoing of the um, elementary school, it's got to be zero something about building. Well, zero energy, you know, impact. Right. I don't think it relates to this so much. Okay, so I, I just want to make sure we don't have to have to go down that road. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that applies here. But no. since, since it's That's a public fine. grant, don't think so. Great. No one has brought that up to me before, so I really don't. Good. Know. Good. Okay, I just want to uh, make sure. I kind of agree that it, um, not feature commercial or religious content only that it opens us up to. Um, you know, if, if it's if they're if an artist is doing something to promote, you know, to somehow promote their, I don't know, something that they're making money off of as a side business, that's an issue. Um, yeah. I think so. Commercial, I understand. Religious, I think, can can be, uh, you know, open us up to a lot of controversy. That we, but in some cultures, when a religion is really identifying a culture well yeah i think you can identify the cultural aspect but not the religious content i mean you can the secular pieces or the even the cultural or the tenets <clears throat> of it i think could be included i mean think of all the art that's been made on the planet that has content that includes both of these things and by commercial i just mean like say somebody is doing a satire about materialism and they depict a whole lot of products and they are and technically they could be called commercial and the town of amherst could be sued also for <laughs> well I, there's, there's so many examples of people using commercial identities in artworks that i don't think that any of those suits ever get to mean anything and religious stuff is like how you interpret what religion means is huge and so i just think any kind of thing that suggests a kind of censorship is a dangerous thing to use when you're asking artists to be artists i i uh, anybody else want to if change? everybody feels that it's fine it's okay robert well uh, first i'm wondering if uh, nifa would have any recommendations as to language because I imagine other towns are wondering about that as well so you might other want to towns ask use this this same language actually I'm going to ask Nefa about it and then my other comment is if it were removed and an artist submitted something that was overtly religious or overtly commercial to the point of you know, trying to profit, I guess. I, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm wondering if that if that item were removed, wouldn't wouldn't something that's not appropriate get uh, not be selected? Not yeah. be selected by yeah. the jury. I mean, yeah. so yeah, you would think this kind like, of thing would be like with self correct, right? You would just like, you know, in in the jury process, you would say, yeah, no. Um, but I think there was a reason we had to be overt about that to um, to direct artists to create proposals that would not um, get caught in that. I think that was the reason why we're being overt about it. And I think that's why the other towns that have the making of public also did the same. But I'm going to reach out to Nefa and ask about it. And if it's something that we don't need to put in then you know if it can just be part of the jury process to just say no thank you then um maybe we can do that i'll i'm going to check in with this one I'll, I'll ask about this this one too okay it's actually isn't uh you know in one of the um in the electrifying amherst project one of the power boxes isn't there something with like a tide detergent box or am i thinking of in northampton I, somewhere i've seen an electric know. box that has some kind of you know, a little spoof of some commercial product. And, sure, Tide um, loves that. <laughs> to, to Dara's point, you know, sometimes it is used satirically. So, right. I, yeah, I, I really don't know. I, well, my initial question was asking you if what Nefa said about it. Right. So that's all I care about right now. I, I so as part of the um, working on this, um, they gave us a number of other towns 
proposals so that we could see what what they're doing as well. And so yeah. some of this was taken directly from it because um, they already passed theirs. They already they're they're already to the implementation stage, and we're way behind. So yeah. um, I I cribbed this language for that reason um, because it was in others. But I'm going to now ask about it and see if it is something we need to have in here and see what they have to say about it. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okay, moving on to selection criteria. Uh, impact, how well does the proposed project concept creatively engage visitors to the park to recognize the cultural, social, economic, and or environmental impact of BIPOC who called Amherst their home, their influence, and or their importance to the story of Amherst? Is that one okay? I came up with that one. <laughs> to edit me if I'm good. Is that good? Uh, what, okay. if, what if somebody wants to bring up the name of the town? One more time, if they wanted to do what? Yeah. Raise issues about the name of our town. Yeah, I wish they would. <laughs> I mean, I think you can, I mean, in this context, It'd be kind of surprising to me if there weren't artists who knew how to do that. Yeah, I would. I agree. Yeah. And that will be the something in the jury process that we can certainly, you know, say, yeah, we want to see more of that. I mm -hmm. think it'd be great. I think we should rename Amherst. <laughs> Sorry. <Me too. laughs> okay. Um, relevance. Uh, how relevant is the proposed artwork to the site selected? Um, community engagement. Um, and this is a hope, like this is especially Gabrielle wanted this in possibly allow for audience interaction and community engagement. APAC and the BID would like to plan community-wide events around the installation um, and uh, be ADA accessible and not impede any walkways in the park. So those are the selection criteria. Any questions, comments? I think the brevity of this version of the application is a big improvement. Yeah, thank you. Okay, priorities. Local BIPOC artists, applicants who identify as, as BIPOC who called Amherst their home. So that's the, uh, the extra point there. Project concept, please provide a conceptual description of your project that speaks to the qualifications and selection criteria listed above. Please be sure to include the artistic medium and the impact you think your project will have for raising BIPOC voices and experiences in Amherst. This was a mandatory, this is an important one. And then uh, initial design, this is not mandatory, you'll notice. And this was something I, I, I was concerned about, but NEPA said not to make this mandatory. Please provide a conceptual sketch or rendering of your proposed project, JPEG or PDF. Um, uh, they uh, they said that it was not as inclusive if people are have to come up with a sketch at this stage, um, because this is an application. So obviously there's, uh, you know, you, we move on to a, another phase after our first initial application process where we choose a number that we like and then we go from there. So uh, at the next step, we would be asking for things like that. So uh, Nefa talked to us about keeping this pretty wide open so that artists can get to that stage. Um, because in the past, um, forms like these have been very limiting and it has discouraged many artists from applying. So this is why we uh, we worded this as such and did not make this mandatory. All right, any questions so far? Good, okay, and finishing up, thank you for your application. Selection will be, will be based on the proposal that scores the highest on our selection rubric. See our call for artists for details or contact Gabriel Gould for more information. Selected artist or team of artists will be recommended by art jury to APAC and town manager for final approval. The art jury will consist of two APAC members, one representative from the Amherst Cultural District, one representative from the Amherst Business Improvement District, two members of the public and town staff, including representative from the Planning Department, Department of Public Works, Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Facilities Department, with additional representation from Amherst Disability Access Advisory Committee, and the Amherst Design Review Board. Finalists will be notified by June 30th, 2023. Okay, is this everything? Uh, one question. Robert. One, oh, sorry, Robert, you go ahead. I'll go ahead, Dara. I'll go after you. Uh, I was just curious about if you are envisioning a semi-finalist being asked for more specifics. Yes. Then yes. this 
should maybe not say finalists, but should say semi-finalists will be um, I don't know why we did finalists. May, I mean, it just oh, it, it just needs to jive with your description of the process. I don't remember why we didn't say semi-finalists there. And um, I guess I'm curious about how, there's a lot of people on this list. Yes. Is typical for all of the NEFA things? Um, that was, we talked, do you remember when we, when we were first working on this in uh, November? <laughs> Uh -huh. December, and we talked about how we need to have a really, uh, uh, a really wide uh, variety of, uh, of people who are uh, interested in this, in this, in this, um, ah, this project, um, representative of all the different facets of Amherst. And I think that's we we when we talked about this, and when we talked about this with our planner. Um, she was the one who said we need to have all these folks, and I think we agreed at that point. Um, this was something that Gabrielle also didn't edit, so I'm assuming this is something that she is used to doing anyways, calling all these people to be part of this. It's so, so many people. It is, yeah. Did you count how many people it is? It, it looks like it's 10 or 12 or more yeah no and that some of them seem to overlap and some of them like it, one of them says two members of the public and town staff does that mean two public and then two town staff or public that is town staff you know what i mean and then yeah. uh, including representatives from and it doesn't say how many just representative from like it's one two three four, five, six, it's like eight, 10, it's almost, yeah, it's more than a dozen people. Yeah. How many different, I mean, what's that gonna make happen? I'm just curious. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. This is something we had talked about way back. I remember, I remember. talking about it. I do. Yeah. Talking and at that time, I, I was so new to the process. I didn't, I thought that was how everything was done. I, I really don't know why we have so many people. Um, Maybe you could check with somebody about like, what's a, what's a good number of people to have on a jury of this kind? I'll talk to Gabrielle about that and see, see what she says about it. Yeah. So Robert, did you want to add Yeah, something? so... Um, finalists will be notified so that I guess I don't recall what is the process exactly so this this committee of large but indeterminate number is <laughs> going to select um how many finalists so what I'm not I clear think it on depends the on how many we receive um let's take a look here real quick well I okay. guess what I'm wondering is that sh should that statement really be the winner or you know the winning artist is selected by june 30th as a, as opposed to finalists because finalists suggest that there's then another step right uh as far as i remember from our the process of this project there is another step is there not hasn't there always been another step where there's we choose finalists and then we go from there isn't i thought that was always the case I honestly don't remember. It's it's been. <laughs> it's been I, I hear you. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Yeah, me too. Um, let me see. Is it on here somewhere? Okay. Okay. So all applications have to be received by May fourteenth. Then we have. Uh, where is that other document? Then June 30th is six weeks after that. I'm going to have to take a look at that. It's a really good question. Because if there because is, if there is another originally, step, it, we should... Originally, we did have a second step. Uh, and that was something that our town planner, uh, uh, it was just, when we, when we all started 
this process that we were told there's a, there is a process where there's they they do the selection of the semifinalists and then they have another one when they have the proposals and the sketches in front of them so that they can choose the, the basically based on the project but um so that's something i'm gonna have to ask about because i had forgotten about that i think there is a second step you might ask who would you be asking i'm gonna ask um nefa first i'm gonna go through all of our but all of our past paperwork about this because I I'm 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 remembering something that I can't think of our planner's name. What uh, Maureen? Restrup? Maureen. Uh, yeah. Um. I remember when we when we worked with Maureen, there was a second step, and so now I'm kind of wondering if that got lost or what the, what that is. So I'm going to go back. I can't talk to Maureen about it, so I'm going to go back in the documentation and talk to Gabrielle about it, and then ask Nefa about it and figure it out. Because I think we have a timeline, and I think the timeline actually builds in something for that second se second step of the process. So let me get back to you on that. And then when they, um, in terms of uh, the selection rubric, and uh, where it says parenthetically, see our call for artists for details. Is it just going to be the rubric part of that doc? Not not the entire document. I actually think that this. Uh, this is not in its final form. I actually think that this document in a more final form will be uh, will be the uh, the call that goes out with this application. I think it's standard to have a like a PDF that you can view and to read the uh, more because it's much more um, okay. a lot more verbiage. This is not this is still the draft. Um, uh, yeah, good question. Um, and then this copy, along with uh, a printed out application, application will be available at the library so that in town hall as well, so that people can apply and you know on paper as well. So that's my understanding. Um, I still feel like like um, Shoshona and I worked on this, and Lori worked on it some, and like we're all still trying to figure out what the intention was from like from Maureen and. And uh, in the past, and I'm, I feel like I'm still struggling. Uh, I've worked on it a lot, but uh, yes, you all have very good questions that I need to find the answers to. So I'm going to get back. I have to get back to you on it. Thanks. The second step I feel was part of this, and I, I think I'm going to have to go back to Maureen's um, initial plan to see if I can find it. <laughs> so. Um, April 3rd meeting uh, is going to be basically after we uh, send this off for promotion, I think. So I may need to get back to you uh, and let you know the answers via email. We can't discuss it in email, but I can give you the answers. Um, but I'm going to ask for your indulgence to um, allow us to vote on this tonight so that we can move it along and get this project going and out the door and um hope i have your trust that i will do the best i can to get this up you know, in the shape it's supposed to be because uh we don't have another meeting between march 20th and and when this is going to be promoted gabe gabriel wants to get this out the door as soon as possible so um with that said i have the things written down that i'm going to check in on okay um and i'll get back to i will send you an email with whatever answers i can glean so that we can set up all those questions. Um, okay, what, what's the date that this application needs to be submitted? Well, uh, so we're voting on it tonight. <laughs> and yeah. I'm gonna be telling Gabrielle um, that either yes, we're gonna be going ahead with this or that no, we are not. And that we have to uh, work on it some more uh, as a commission and uh, have another meeting to vote on it to approve it. Um, but no, what is, I just want to know the date for the minute. So the date that this is supposed to be going out to the public is like uh, April 2nd or 3rd, right around there. But That's it needs to be turned back to NEFA. This application needs to be submitted to New, the New England Foundations of the Art. Oh, so this is the most, this is the most, this one has been looked over by NEFA. NIFA yep. has looked over this with Gabrielle. And this is the form, this is the draft we're all working on together. So they already have it. So, okay, so this application needs to be put out, put um, 
put out to the public? It needs to be approved by our commission and it needs to, the final edits need to be back to NEFA so that NEFA can then cut the check and give us the go ahead to start promoting it publicly. Okay, so this uh, there isn't really a date. I mean, the date the date for that is before April second. So it, you can it just says say April third on your. Yeah, on. You could say before the beginning of you know the month before the beginning of April. This needs to be approved by NEFA. It has to be approved by approval. NEFA. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm confused. I, I'm just trying to get it straight for the minute. So Fine. this application needs to be approved by our commission before the beginning of April so that it can be submitted to NEFA and put out, and the call put out by when? April, did you say April 3rd, Mikey, I think? Is that the date we have on? Yes, yep, that's the, on the um, the old form from okay. that we had. Um, it says call for art is posted by April 3rd. And what's the next date of our next APAC meeting is on April 3rd, April 3rd, April 3rd. So um, Harry is asking us to, us to vote on this at this meeting. I can get these answers and we can meet again next week. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm personally fine with you're getting the answers. Here's what I wrote. Terry will get back to us with all the answers to these questions and we'll revise the documents accordingly. Okay. So given that I, I propose that we vote on this now, unless someone else wants to, you know, try to find a way for us all to meet again next week. I think that's good what you just said. Okay, so I, okay, so Lori. <laughs> Good job, Lori. <laughs> how, uh, Lori, how do I set them up? Lori um, proposes. I'd like, I'd like to make a motion to. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Lori made a motion to approve um, the application. Um, as presented with revisions to the questions raised. Okay, something like that. So I, pr I propose that we um, approve this application as presented with revisions to the questions raised made by Terry um, before it goes out. Okay. All right, do I have a second? Okay, Mikey seconded. All in favor? Do we, I think typically, isn't there time for discussion before the vote? There is totally time for discussion, please. If I could just qualify that slightly. So the only thing I feel particularly strongly about is that criteria in the rubric about um, project impact versus, right. I forget what the label of the other piece was, uh, project you qualifications. Make sure that it was 50-50, right. At least 50 50. I mean, I would even promote, you know, or propose rather, you know, 60 40. I, I do think that project impact is really what we, at least personally, I, I would think, you know, that that would be of the greatest value. But um, so I'm, I'm fine with, I, I trust you implicitly, Terry, that the other uh, revisions will be made as appropriate uh, based on what you find out. Um, but uh, I do want, to uh, pay special attention to that one. Okay. Um, I don't have that in front of me. So can you be specific? It was uh, currently it's 40 points for what? Well, so right. currently the rubric, I, I believe it was 60 points for you go back meets project qualifications or, or something like that. Okay. So proposed um, project qualifications um, is 60 right, that's, points. Right. And then um, Project impact was forty Project points. Impact and was forty. I think it 50, 50, 50. perhaps should be reversed so that you know qualifications are forty and impact is sixty or at a, at a at a minimum fifty fifty. But we worked on this like you would not believe. This was like such 
this took weeks. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I had to. Yeah. So this is so these these things the the qualifications are we can't have we cannot have a piece of art that does not meet these things. So these things were very important. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like in terms yeah. of like installation and you know, um, I mean impact is also they're like equally so important. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, if it's easier to make it 50 50, then by all means, I, I you know, I, I don't want anyone straining for mathematical reasons here. So, it, but I, I do think at least 50 50 would, would right. make sense. I would agree yeah. with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had to. Um, um, Laura, you said something a minute ago. I wanted to address that. Well, I, I, I think that project impact is is very subjective. So and subjectivity is something we had to take out of our rubric entirely. We, yeah. we, we could not say anything like, you know, does this, um, what value does this bring kind of thing, anything that would beg a, a subjective answer, we had to take out entirely. This was workshops like you wouldn't believe this, this rubric. We, we, we had so, I, we had so many more from our, from Maureen. Um, we whittled it down to this in order for it to be more inclusive, but I can talk to them okay. about it, well, can, can you show the the two uh, categories under project impact again? I, I can't see them. Yeah, uh, impact is here. Yeah, I Thanks. had like I think I had four here, and the other two were too subjective, so I had to take them uh -huh. off. And then I I changed the numbers to make them equal. But um, I'm gonna talk to Nefa and see if we can make them uh, 50 50 at least, so we can have um, equality there. If I can do that math, can I do that math? Let's see one. Two, three, four. Oh, that'll work, right? Oh, don't make me math. All right, I'm going to talk to Neff about it, see what I can do. I, I hear what you're saying. Okay, about. again, I, I I trust with whatever you come up with. Uh, I thank you. In resolution, so. So um, I, I worked on vote. this. We need to vote on Lori's uh, motion. Yes, yes. Yes, we were at the uh, discussion. So now we are at the, uh, if you approve of this proposal, this motion, please say aye. 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 We have three, four ayes. Oh, aye. Four ayes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Um, so basically, uh, Nefa and Gabrielle are going to be, uh, well, Gabrielle's going to be running with this. She can't wait. She's like ch chomping at the bit. She can't wait to get this out. Um, so really, this is a uh, our our voting for this moves it forward of uh, as uh, as a as an item in our commission so that we can receive the funding. So um, because this was granted to the Public Art Commission. Um, we had to do this this part and agree and, and approve so that we can then I can now tell NEFA this application has been approved with these after I solve these things as well and then we'll move on to the next phase which is final edits so we get this document fully ready to go and then make whatever changes we need to do to the application get those ready to go have a printed version so that we can have those available at the library and all this to be ready and ready to go by April 3rd. So that's the big push. So thank you for your trust. Um, um, I will do my best to get these things answered and get back to you so you have um, you have answers on that. Thank you. Okay, you guys are amazing. You have brought up such great questions. Uh, I, feel, I feel so fortunate to have your, your viewpoints and your perspectives, thank you so much. And, and I thank you for your time. It has been now an hour and I was hoping to keep it at an hour. So um, in respect for your time and knowing that I'll be seeing you again on April 3rd, I'm going to move that we- Oh, wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay. There's public comment. Do we have- We do have, I'm comment? so sorry. We have um, We have public comment. Uh, does any, does Madeline, would you like to say anything for our, uh, for our meeting here? Have any input? Hi. Uh, I'm just taking a class at Amherst and we're supposed to go to some public meetings. So I just kind of was like budding and just to see like how it works. So yeah, I'm just, and I'm interested in art too. So this kind of was the right. one for me. 
yeah, just to see like the structure of a public meeting and stuff. So this was really cool. And this is an exciting project. So it is so exciting. We are very excited about it. And uh, you're also welcome to come to one of our other meetings. We're going to meet in person next month, which is amazing. It'll okay. be uh, we'll have that up on the um, on the Amherst website. So you can see where that's going to be. And cool, awesome. uh, yeah, we we hope that as an artist, you decide to put in our application for uh, we have a couple of calls for art coming out soon. So keep keep uh, we, if you're on not on our Facebook page, take a look at the Facebook okay. page. Uh, we'll be putting our calls up on there and they'll also be sent out um, on the uh, bulletin, which I'm learning about and on the Gazette and I guess via Notify Me. So all those ways you can find out about our calls for art. And thank you okay. for coming. Yeah, thanks for letting me join. <laughs> of course, thank you. Okay, folks. Terry, um, Quick if question. this document will, if I just leave it, you will have it for the minutes. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I will. I will have it. I'm gonna stop uh, sharing. Can I stop sharing? So one quick question: When's yes. our next mini meeting? Is it April third, and what time and where? Our next meeting is April third. Um, I'm hoping for it to be a town hall, but I'm waiting to hear back from Angela if we can do that. Okay, and so you'll let us know. Yet. Uh, yep, I will let you know, okay. and we'll, we'll you will be getting an agenda at least 48 hours prior to that meeting, and that will have the location on it. Okay. Um, if it's not there, it might be at the Jones Library or some other place where we can meet publicly. So I will let okay. you know. Okay. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> and I will see you on April 3rd. Thank, thank you, oh, Terry. Move for to all close. Your hard move, work move, to, uh, move to end meeting. <laughs> can I um, hear a second? <laughs> can I hear a motion actually to end the meeting? I do. Thank you, Mikey. And a second. I second it. Thank you, Lori. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes to close. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Terry, for all your hard aye. work on Thank this. you for minutes, yeah. Lori. Appreciate you. Right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, I feel so, it's so funny to, I feel so funny doing this. How do you feel?